Holy crap. Welcome to episode three of Tree Talk. I'm very fortunate to have uh, Ken Anktel. We're going to go Butch Anktel on this. I'm getting to that, but <laughs> <laughs> more commonly known as Butch. Um, Butch is an avid sledder. But in his day job, he is fortunate enough to travel the world with Ken Block, um, being a lead technician. It was that original job title. No, we're going to go technician and truck driver on this one. So I kind of help manage builds back in the shop. I'm a part of an absolutely incredible group of guys that travel the world together for 10 seasons now to make sure Ken's cars continue to run right. And then uh, if it's in the U.S. and Ken's car is somewhere, I'm the guy that takes care of that movement. Yeah, and if you aren't familiar with Ken Block, which I'm sure 90% of you do know who he is, um, he's a phenomenal rally driver and at this point almost a, a stunt driver, a drift car driver, um, building incredible, incredible one-off cars and, and doing a series of videos. Uh, he's most known for the Gymkhana series. Um, there's been 10 of them now and they showcase some of the gnarliest cars built to date in some of the most iconic locations across the world. Um, and Ken has been lucky enough to travel these locations. Sorry, Butch, I know, I know. There's a bit of confusion of two Kens in the same office. That's how it started, man. So Butch has been uh, lucky enough to travel the world uh, with Block, getting the cars there, um, being along on these shoots, all these race events, and, and seeing some spectacular places along the way. But when he's home, you picked up sledding uh, recently. Yeah, I'm about as green and wet behind the ears of sledding as it gets. I grew up uh, in southern New Hampshire, but my grandfather was in Rangeley, Maine. My grandparents were in Rangeley, Maine, and I used to jump on his Yamaha Ovation and ride out to a, ride across the lake to a Quasic and come back. But uh, rallying was it. Motorsports was it for me through my teens and 20s. That's all I could think about. That's all I wanted to do. And uh, Moved to the West, Ken picked up himself a very nice, very generous BRP sponsorship. So we got a bunch of Can-Am X3s and Skidoos and uh, found myself on a Skidoo more than often. It turned in from, hey, let's uh, get you out there to help Ken shoot some photos to uh, every waking second of my life is now trying to be on a sled. Nice. That's awesome to hear. I love when somebody gets into the sport later in life and still appreciates it just as much as the guys that have been doing it their whole life. With that being said, though, it has snowed a stupid amount here. We are in Afton, Wyoming area, and um, I bet there's three feet of fresh. I would say probably in the last 24 hours, three feet of fresh. It's uh, sloughing nicely up on the hills. Not that I should call it nicely, but... It is, I would say, probably the deepest day in the lower 48 I've ever had. Yeah, so we are gonna do what we can to make it anywhere and keep this episode going. I'm sure you guys will deal with heavy breathing on both ends and a few stucks here and there, but let's go ride for a little bit. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so getting into sledding later, but uh, always having an appreciation for motorsports has been interesting to me. Um, you don't live a quote unquote normal life in the action sports industry. Um, your first time you kind of went out with Block, um, did you know this is something that's not average to be doing in this industry? You know, this is not exactly the, the normal run of the mill operation here these guys are on another level yeah it's just a completely different uh, he's in the same motorsports as hundreds of thousands of other people but man we do it different that's for sure everyone wants to put trophies and plaques on the wall we just we dominate social media that's what we do and we make a living out of it and ken is 
an incredible race car driver. Probably the, he's absolutely puts the car anywhere he wants to go, but dang. What he is at a race car driver, he is tenfold more as someone with marketing skills. He is, he is unbelievably good at marketing himself. Right, right, and ooh, there's a little flat spot here. How are we doing back there? Oh yeah, buddy. Uh-oh. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna cut down right here. Head back up the hill. Ooh, it is deep today, buddy. I'm coming. <laughs> I gotta catch up to you, hold on. I think this is your truck. Oh, there you are. As you can hear so nicely, this episode is brought to you by Dave McKinney's Silver Turbo. <laughs> yeah, it makes a little noise, but today's day to have one for sure. Oh man, it's a blast out here with those things. Um, what interests me on a scale of that, of what you guys do is the locations you go to. Is there something that stands out to you more than anywhere else that you constantly look forward to going to? Uh, Europe I call a starter, starter continent. Man, it's so easy to travel through there. Everyone is so nice, everyone speaks English, it's brilliant. I like going to the places that aren't that nice. The Argentina, Chile, South Africa, Macedonia, Greece, those areas where it's just so out of my element and different. It's really cool to just go there and see how other people live instead of how we live in the Western Hemisphere. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible the people you meet when you have a obviously a massive, massive fan base. But um, you specifically, I know you're you're constantly on the phone, calling people, making sure cars are in the right place. On a day-to-day -day basis, when you guys are planning for a huge trip, what is your key role? Like, there's so much behind the scenes that, that make those videos happen, make all these events happen. And you're kind of the guy that's, granted I know you have a great team behind you, but you play a massive role in, in making all that happen. Yeah, we've got a great group of guys. Our boss, Derek, he runs everything and he relies on me now as shop manager to just make sure it's we're following through with it and going through with it. And uh, it's, it's pretty big for me to be a little pillow right there. Another pillow. <laughs> a day like today, I forget the questions. Yeah, I... I I work with Derek so much to make sure that I'm going the right place at the right time, and he's just overseeing what I do to the tenfold. And uh, it's a lot. We got a lot of different cars going a lot of different places all at the same time. Right. Yeah, you guys are on one hell of a schedule. I know that all that stuff comes down to minutes. Um, it's getting those things across the country to the event in the in the one piece also when you're shipping things i mean i know you guys take the extra mile to make sure they're getting there right and not having any issues so when you get there you can run a smooth event a smooth race and have the least amount of stress as possible the logistics behind this stuff is absolutely incredible and anyone like saying that's been the chile or other friends that have been around the world whether russia or japan they know what it takes think about sending a sled now it's a million dollar race car with two million dollars worth of parts going in one direction. This is the first time I've done this where I can't just keep flowing because I know one of us will just get stuck somewhere. I'm gonna try and go that way and come back at this. Very, very good day to have a turbo. <laughs> yeah, you can. Um, also a mono suit. I've been, I go back and forth on the 509 gear from a two piece to a mono. And I've been wearing this Allied mono all early season because it's mainly deep early season. But for all the guys that always ask me, what's the best all around piece on
honestly, the, the mono is great. I would still push most guys to a two-piece because in the spring you can shed a layer, you can you can take your jacket off casually, you don't have to tie your mono suit around the waist, but. I've always been a two-piece guy and the two-piece that I'm in right now, I absolutely love it. I'm, I recently moved to suspenders on pants instead of a belt, game changer. Big time yeah, game changer. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, now the more I look at this, I feel like I'm only gonna make about 10 feet up that. <laughs> hey, that's the point of it, man. Go have a blast. <laughs> That's a nice turbo trench you got yourself up there. <laughs> oh man, it might be a blind there if you want to punch it. Ooh, that's a big old dent you put up there. I like this little pillow I'm sitting on. I might just pop this and see what I can do up the other side. I lost my line here. Oh, there we are. There we go, there we go. Bring it around. Yes! Ripping, man. Absolutely ripping. Well, it's good that 509 just caught my first ever re-entry. Was that the first time? Yeah. That looked like you, that was pretty textbook. Looks like you've been doing that for years. Never even tried one before. Sometimes you're forced in these conditions. Man, if I can make one comment about sledding that I love, it's the greatest form of exploration. Definitely. I try to explain it to people. There's really no other form of motorsport besides like a helicopter that you can reach these areas in the amount of time we spend to get there. The amount of time that we cover is incredible. Uh, you could hike it in the summer, but it's totally different. We hiked, my wife and I, hiked Wagner Lake up the Cottonwoods this summer. I was one day up, spent the night one day down. Big Abbey shoot in the summer we went up. We've covered 10 times that distance in two hours. Right, right. Yeah, like I said, there's nothing really else you can, there, there's very few people that can experience a backcountry like this. You can ski, snowboard, you still gotta take a lift or you gotta hike depending on what you're into, but sled, snow bikes, like we're really fortunate to be able to see all this day after day and, and cover so much ground. Yeah, hey Dave, it looks like it shelves over here to the right. Might go up, could be some untracked pillows over there. Oh, got it. Oh, bees be a tree, not a stump. Oh. Thankfully, I'm like side on the hill, and I knew I wasn't going up. I should have gone side hill sooner. Some dirt there. We can check the weak layers in the faceting down there while we're here. <coughs> nice mouthful of two stroke. Oh boy. Two strokes bad when you get a mouthful of it. Unicorn runs methanol. That'll clear a room. That's unbelievably bad to smell. It'll clear a room as well as your brain cells. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're straight to tears. Everyone's coughing like I just was. Unicorn is unbelievably just intoxicating. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing that doesn't transfer to film. The smell. And you guys deal on a daily basis from tires burning to race gas burning to methanol burning. And you were saying actually, shut that slut off. <laughs> you were saying like Ken at this point, uh, just to probably save his life, has now had a full dragster uh, helmet set up with air filtration in it. Yeah, his uh, Mustang helmet. Uh, he was wearing like a Home Depot mask for a while, a little filter thing. Wasn't really doing the job, so. He's got a helmet from someone I can't remember. It's basically a top fuel dragster helmet. It's got big two big filter cans on it. Man, that thing helped him a lot. Plus it's got a big, big skirt that comes over his shoulders, helps a lot. But that car is just an absolute animal. 1400 horsepower, all wheel drive, and in third, fourth, fifth gear, you just roll into the throttle, catches the boost, lights up the tires. All the way up into fourth, even fifth. Oh yeah. Jesus. But he he's able to put that car exactly where he wants it every single time. It's the most impressive thing out there. It's gotta be the car he loves most, just cause it just shits and grips or whatever the saying is. Man, that thing, he just, it's impressive watching him. For everything you see on the film, I've seen 30 times more because of all the practicing that we've done. It's impressive. Almost downhill stuck deep. <laughs> yeah, I've been there before. It's incredible. Whew, 
gonna catch your breath. Oh, this is just glorious. Where are we at here? Oh, going up this way. Little sidey hill. Yeah. A little rock foot forward as I come through the trees. Oop, I'm gonna head back down because I, for one, can't go up that. <laughs> I'm following you. Yeah, Butch, it's pretty cool having you in 509 gear. Um, it's always enjoyable meeting somebody that shares a love for action sports, but is working in a different realm of the industry. And then to connect over not only a brand, I mean, but obviously on a friendship level, I, I consider you a very good friend. We've uh, had some good times together, but it's really neat to see you wearing and enjoying your 509 gear. I mean, it started with an altitude helmet that I got from 80 Triple S in Ogden. And from there, it snowballed into uh, just trying to get the best product of everything. I got my R200 series this year. Ooh. I'm just trying. There, I, I can't see really. <laughs> I'm trying to answer the question. All I can do is just try and figure out where I'm going. Yeah, so I got my R200 series. And uh, have loved it and have just chased 509 for everything they make at this point. Man, it's been a good time riding this stuff. It's. Yeah, it's cool. You've been a big promoter and a fan of the Ignite goggles, um, a heated goggle that we run. If today, I don't, I'm not wearing them right now, and I wish I was, and I'm envious of you. It's the perfect goggle on days like this. It's a, uh, I would call it a crutch. It's a crutch because I have the battery and the heating element, and I don't have to worry about anything. Turn it on, whether I'm going burst or full, all day, clear vision, everything. I don't have... I say clear vision, but today there's other elements of snow that are keeping it from being clear vision. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I might be in a situation. <laughs> That was intense. I uh, don't usually accept defeat much, but in our defense, this has to be one of the deepest days in the last year. Um, definitely deepest day of the season. Probably one of my top three deepest days. Fluffy, light, um, it, yeah, just when you think you're gonna grab traction, there's so many storms that have rolled through here in the last week that you just keep going down and down and I think we finally got our shit completely tossed. You know what's funny about that hill though? It's a perfect example of what's happened in this valley this year. It's a shit ton of snow in the last two weeks to a absolute hard solid ice chunk base. We found that. I found it. <laughs> Insert clip here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a blast though, man. I've been looking forward to getting out with you. Um, kind of wild how you and I met even. Um, you're a mutual friend in a roundabout way. I think you might have a better grasp on than I do. We were trying to put it together here off camera. Yeah, we, uh, you had reached out to me and we had been chatting online just about sleds for a little bit and gear and what I should be getting myself into with your gear. And then uh, we realized you and I are both close friends with Brandon Steinecker, the drummer of the band Rancid. And uh, he was, it was kind of funny how we realized, hey, you know Brandon, and I know Brandon. And we started to talk about Brandon, and we had yet another outreach aside from sledding to talk about. Yeah, and music for me plays a huge role in my life. I'm sure everybody who follows my social page or whatever, I, I do a lot of, like, song of the day stuff. And 
uh, punk rock's kind of what got me into action sports. Well, it was just associated with it at the time. It was in all the videos, and, and to this day, I I listen to a little bit of everything. You and I were discussing that, like Frank Sinatra, the, the Rat Pack, all over the board, Beatles, Stones, to punk, but punk is still my go-to to get me amped up to get out here and ride, and then having that mutual relationship with Brandon, it was pretty cool because he's a guy that was kind of during that era when they were really blowing up, um, was uh, action sports played a huge role in, in those bands doing well. Um, so that was cool that you and I happened to connect on that and just small world scenario. Yeah, I like my East Coast punk rock. I'm a big dropkick fan. I go that way, but don't get me wrong, I still love Rancid and Pennywise and the list goes on and on. It's cool to be able to connect like that and be able to connect out here talking about the same music. It's uh, definitely, punk rock is something that I sort of think defines uh, action sports. It's definitely that motivator at the beginning of the day. For sure. And I know we were listening to it in the truck on the way up, and the goods were delivered today. We had a stellar day. It looks like we might get a little break of blue here to play in the afternoon, but I can't thank you enough, man, for coming up. Um, looking forward to riding with you again, coming down to the Hoonigan shop. Always a pleasure. You, you, you give a great tour. Um, not open to the public, FYI, sorry. <laughs> you gotta know a guy that knows a guy. But, uh, yeah, you, you run a, a tight ship, you, you work your ass off, and it, it's neat to come out here, and this is kind of your home away from home, get off the road and escape and ride, so really happy we could finally do this. Yeah, it's funny, when I'm back here, I'm looking at where I'm gonna go next and excited for that, then when I'm out there, I'm working hard, but I'm excited to get back and play the next storm. Sweet. You got any closing words? Um, I just want to thank you guys for not only supporting me, but supporting other people like me and understanding what it takes to market. I definitely give it to 509 and everyone at 509 for understanding marketing and understanding what it takes to put your brand out there and support the people that support you. You guys have gone from, no offense, virtual nothings to the biggest name in action sports or snowmobiling. And it's, uh, it's proven. You guys are something else. And every episode of Tree Talk is something I look forward to, and it's an honor to be on it. Sweet, man. I appreciate that. And our, our team is, we're fortunate enough to have a really well-rounded team that uh, stays back in the home base while I'm out running around gathering the content for us to continue to push the brand to new levels. And people like yourself here just amplify that. Unique guests, not a sledder, a sledder, not a professional sledder, but you enjoy it. You have an awesome career. Um, and we all just bond over the love of sledding and we're out here enjoying it together. So, um, Ken is, uh, active on the Instagram too. Pretty cool. He, he, sorry, butch, uh, heaven <laughs> forbid. You. Yeah. Just real quick. The boss has got the same name as me. So my British coworkers decided I lose my name and I become butch. <laughs> uh, butch is active on Instagram. Uh, it's pretty cool. If you guys give him a follow, you get to see a lot of behind the stuff stuff while he's on the road. Um, transporting cars for block at events, um, everything from SEMA to World Rally Cross in the, in the past um, to Nitro World Games, um, a little bit of stuff in the shop, working on cars, and then out here sledding. Um, he rides Utah all the time, so if you guys are ever curious on how the snow conditions are, he's really, really on top of paying attention to avalanche conditions and reposting it as well. Um, it's great to have somebody passionate about the safety side of this also. So give him a follow. It's I'm, I'm going to butcher exactly what it is. I know there's some underscores in there. Your Instagram? Ken underscore butch. I'll put it right somewhere in here. So, sweet man. Thank you a ton. Always a pleasure, Dave. Let's go ride. We should probably get stuck a couple more times, huh? Yeah, I think the only thing I'm going to shred today is toilet paper. So, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. On that note, let's go ride. Tail, 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 tail.